Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high. And on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, who didst call thy faithful servants, John Coleridge Patterson and his companions, to be witnesses and martyrs in the islands of Melanesia, and by their labors and sufferings didst raise up a people for thine own possession. Pour forth thy Holy Spirit upon thy church in every land, that by the service and sacrifice of many, thy holy name may be glorified and thy kingdom enlarged. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you, to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed. Because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, a criminal, or a mischief maker. Yet if any of you suffers as a Christian, do not consider it in disgrace, but glorify God because you bear his name. For the time has come for judgment to begin with the household of God. If it begins with us, what will be the end for those who do not obey the gospel? And if it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinners? Therefore, let those suffering in accordance with God's will entrust themselves to a faithful creator while continuing to do good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for the Mass this afternoon is Psalm 121. We will recite Psalm 121 together in unison, beginning on page 779 in the Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. 
so that the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Glory be to thee, O Lord. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the Gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father, when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Today in the church calendar, we commemorate uh, Bishop John Coleridge Pattison, who was a new, um, a new one to celebrate in the calendar for me just a few years ago when I learned about him at seminary. But I'll read to you just a bit about who John Coleridge Pattison was. So the death of Bishop Patterson and his companions at the hands of the Melanesian Islanders, whom Patterson had sought to protect from the slave traders, aroused the British government to take serious measures to prevent piratical manhunting in the South Seas. This is in the 19th century, so he died around 1871. Their martyrdom was the seed that produced the strong and vigorous church which flourishes in Melanesia today. Bishop Patterson was born in London, and he trained at Oxford, and he was rather quickly ordained a priest and after he was a fellow at Merton College in 1852, and he was called to New Zealand, where he successfully built a vibrant community of Anglican worshipers and teachers who went out into this place that had never been familiar with the Christian church and evangelized them with a fair amount of tact for people who were living and working in this, uh, in this milieu in the 19th century. Of course, uh, missionary work is fraught in our Anglican is much to be said and much that still needs to be said about some of the devastation and damage that took place from some of those um, early initiatives. But throughout that painful story, there is also one of humility and grace and genuine love of the gospel of Christ. And I give thanks for our church commemoration that recalls so many of the people who actually did right by so much of this work and remind us of the complex and, I suppose, fruitful history of people who passionately loved Jesus Christ and gave their lives, quite literally gave their lives, in the case of Bishop Patterson and his companions, to bring the gospel to people in a way that met them precisely where they were and successfully built up a community of mutual care and sustenance and grace. And in fact, Bishop Patterson was so uh, enamored of the place where he moved, and he was so committed to these people that he took great personal risk to fight against forces of slave trading, of piracy, of all sorts of unchecked evil that was running rampant in the territories that he served. And he was actually uh, killed almost as a mistake. He was killed uh, in retribution for something he did not do. He was mistaken for someone who was uh, in, in I suppose, in relationship with these slave traders when in fact he had been working against them. And so years later, the Church of Melanesia actually went uh, to his home to offer penance and reconciliation for the error that had taken place. Because him and his companions, they were actually known uh, for their good work and their care. Something else that, uh, also that stuck out to me 
who was that our commemoration remembers that he was quite adept at language learning, a man after my own heart, and it is said that he learned to speak some 23 languages of the native Melanesian people. He took his work so seriously that he spoke to the people in the language that they, uh, that they were speaking together. And it strikes me as a radical act of humility, both then and today. I was reminded uh, when I was a child, I had this odd little devotional that once had a line that I'll never forget. I was maybe eight or nine when I read this, and it said, do your best today to recognize all people as precious jewels in the crown of the beloved. I don't know, saccharine maybe, but it really struck me at the age of nine, eight or nine, that this was such a remarkable way of encountering fellow human beings. To see every single person that we meet and to understand every single person on God's earth, not just as, you know, I don't know, just an ordinary person, an ordinary thing, but as a jewel, shining and precious in nothing less than the crown upon the head of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it occurred to me later as I was working in ministry that spreading the gospel and welcoming people into lives of faith is like allowing the light of Jesus to shine within that jewel that all people are and reflect the magnificent, glorious, perfect, and illuminating grace of Christ to shine out in their very own heart. And so we see one another as jewels, as precious, and then we help them to see that that light is meant to be shining from within them from this time forth forevermore. It strikes me that Bishop Patterson was someone who also recognized human beings in this way and committed his own life, and in fact gave his own life, to help others recognize that light shining within them. A stunning example for all of us today, and one I think that bears a special significance today, when it's so easy to forget the pain and the grace in one another as fellow human beings and children of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially to Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Daniel, our bishop, and Sean, Nora, Stephen, Gordon, and Nicholas, my brother and sister priests who worship and pray in this place, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joseph, our president, Kamala, our vice president, the members of the Supreme Court and the Congress, and all state and local officials, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee, of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all of those people who have been entrusted to us in this place for our prayers, especially Chris, Sue, George, John, Mary Jane, Marlene, Marguerite, Mark, Ira, Nick, Bryce, Audrey, Alex, Katie, Rodney, Howard, Richard, Margaret, Will, Lisa, Scotty, Stephen, Cindy, Eric, Sean, Rebecca, and James. 
and all of those people who have asked us to keep them in our own prayers, and all people throughout the world with no one to remember them and to pray for them. We pray for all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in our faith and fear, especially all those who died of COVID-19 in this past day, all those whose lives have been taken from them by acts of violence, fear, warfare, and oppression, and all those who have died alone, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace to follow the good examples of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, blessed Bishop Pat Pattison, Blessed Mark the Evangelist, and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Blessed art thou, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which the earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed art thou, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Father of the Almighty. May the Lord receive the sacrifice of my hands, to the praise and glory of his name, both for our good and for that of all his holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who for our sins was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself, who by his suffering and death became the author of eternal salvation, for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty, with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless, and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, 
most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, most humbly beseeching thee, that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech, we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property it is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takest away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Body of 
body of Christ, the bread. The body of Christ, the bread. The body of Christ, the bread. The body of Christ, the bread. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the visible body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs to hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.